What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so this is the situation we have right here. This is potential tropical cyclone two. It is still a potential tropical cyclone. It's not a tropical storm yet, but it is gonna get there at some point, either to, uh, today or tonight. We just need to wait, uh, wait and see what, what goes on. The NHC is a bit hesitant to do this because, uh, from what I understand, there is still uh, some infighting going on with the center of circulation. With basically what's going on, let me pause this real quickly to show, explain it. But basically, what's going on is that there is a uh, upper and mid uh, level circulation right here, or in, or in around this area of the storm right here. But the uh, but the low level circulation is still uh, is still around this area of the system right here, and that infighting is kind of uh, is kind of hampering its devel uh, development a little bit, and its uh, and the uh, its strengthening because at this point. We have two different circulations, and whichever's uh, and they're and they're basically fighting each other to become the more dominant one. And depending on how that comes out, will depend uh, basically on the implications. Because the last video I made, I talked about uh, how there was a potential relocation of its center potentially going to happen. Well, it hasn't happened yet. There's still some infighting going on that's in that system. But I'm gonna stay tuned and keep an eye on it as the situation develops. I think that's one of the reasons they're hesitant to uh, to designate this a tropical storm. But with that being said, we have the cone right here. Uh, right, uh, they're now. Actually, having this making landfall in Nicaragua is a strong tropical storm with winds of 70 miles per hour. They did downgrade this, however, it's mostly because of, of this reason right here. There is a greater than normal uncertainty in the system's forecast intensity once it reaches the southwestern Caribbean Sea late Thursday and Friday. Uh, it, this will depend on how much it interacts with land th uh, through tonight through early Thursday. It's basically talking about the ABC Islands right here uh, that off the coast of Venezuela. So far, it's been doing a good job uh, in staying over water. Uh, but and from what I understand, if we take a look at the cone, it doesn't look like it's going to impact make landfall on much land. And this thing is moving quite fast at 24 miles per hour. So whatever land it does make landfall on, if it does at all, it won't really hamper its intensity or anything like that that much. So yeah, basically that with the infighting in the system is why the NHC is hesitant to designate this a tropical storm right now and why they've downgraded it from a hurricane to a tropical storm at, at landfall. Nevertheless, we cannot uh, we cannot um, negate uh, all the threats. The wind threat may have gone down a little bit, but the rain threat, the flooding threat hasn't. In fact, uh, we've we've been getting reports that Grenada and Tobago got really hit really hard with rain last night uh, as the system moved through. Uh, there's uh, reports of flooding all over Grenada and Tobago. Trinidad got mostly spared from that, which is good news. But Tobago and Grenada, they got they didn't get direct hits, but they got hit pretty hard with the rain last night. So yeah, there is uh, there was some flooding that occurred, and I want. Want to report that and give you guys an up. I want to say thank you for uh, for updating me. And if you if there's any more s systems that's going on, if there's any conditions you'd like to report, please put that in the comments down below. It's much appreciated. But we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the tracks and the intensity right here. The track models basically not much has changed right here. It is going through the same stuff. Although the, the models now have this moving into the Pacific Ocean, we're seeing another system crossing uh, from uh, from oceans now. We had Agatha uh, cross into the Atlantic Ocean, became Tropical Storm Alex, and now we're seeing potential Tropical Storm Bonnie right here uh, crossing into the uh, the Pacific Ocean and becoming a named storm right here. The cone also forecasts this as well. So if you're in the Pacific Ocean, we're gonna uh, have to you're gonna have to pay attention. And I'll be covering it for you guys who are down in Mexico, El Salvador, Guatemala, those areas, just to see what's going on. Uh, as of right now, it looks like it's going to stay out to sea, but anything can happen at this point. The intensity models, the majority have them as a tropical storm as it makes landfall in Nicaragua. That doesn't excuse the flooding threat at all. Uh, uh, but we have, uh, we do have one model that goes on a limb that has this as a hurricane, which. I don't think is going to I don't think is going to happen. My range is still 60 to 90 miles per hour because there is still that uncertainty the NHC laid out. So I want everyone to keep that in mind. But nevertheless, uh, but nevertheless, expect anywhere some a system if you're in Nicaragua, expect a system between the, uh, that range. And the deep layer shear, like the only thing that's getting in this storm's way is uh, is basically it's it, the speed of it that it's going and the uh, the infighting between this, uh, the two centers of circulation right there. So that's basically the only thing two things that are getting in its way. 
the waters, uh, the, the waters are getting warm. They're getting warmer by the day. Actually, we're seeing uh, 83, 84 degrees Fahrenheit as usual. We're seeing some areas uh, now in the Caribbean Sea cracking 85 degrees Fahrenheit uh, right now. So that's basically what we're taking a look at. Uh, taking a look at right here. Now I'm gonna go on and talk about the HMON. We're gonna go over the HMON, CMC, and HWORF models real quickly just to show you what's going on, what their their latest model runs are predicting. The HMON isn't predicting that much land interaction. They are predicting a little bit, but it's not going to hamper it to the point where it just absolutely uh, disintegrates and needs to reorganize. It's going to hamper it for a little bit. It might get a little disoriented, and then it's going to start in organizing again. It's going to start intensifying. The HMON still has this making landfall as a, hurric as a hurricane, so we need to pay close attention to, to that. Still, that doesn't excuse the flooding threat, and I, I know I keep saying this like a broken record, but... Uh, but that's basically uh, what I need to emphasize with this. You don't need to have a hurricane for it to be a threat. There's a wind threat. There's a storm surge threat. There's a flooding threat. Like, there's a lot of threats with these systems, and people think, oh, it's only a Category 1 hurricane. It's not going to affect me that much. You don't know uh, You don't know that. You don't know the uh, kind of uh, flooding that may bring. Let me give you guys an example real quickly before we go on. In 1998, Hurricane Mitch made landfall in Honduras as a Category 1 hurricane. However, it literally stayed in Central America. It caused a massive amount of rain to flood, causing a lot of landslides, and ended up killing about 6,000 people because of, those, uh, because of those mudslides. So... Just, an, just This is just an example. This is an extreme case of flood threats, but I, it's still an example nevertheless. Let's go ahead and talk about the CMC real quickly. Let's go ahead and backtrack this. So this thing has it moving through the uh, same area as the HMON, although, it, although this thing actually has it making landfall further to the south near the border of Nicaragua and Costa Rica right here at uh, 1,003 millibars as potentially as tropical as a tropical storm, moderate tropical storm. Then it has it reorganizing in the Pacific Ocean, developing, intensifying, and kind of stagnating, uh, basically having it stay out of sea right at the sea right there. So that's basically what we're looking at. Let's go ahead and talk look at the H wharf right here. The H wharf is also pretty interesting right here. Same thing. It actually has less land interaction than the H Mon does. And then it starts to develop, starts organizing into a potential strong tropical storm, makes landfall as either a strong tropical storm or a weak hurricane with winds of, uh, with potential winds up to 75 miles per hour and a pressure of 996. And then actually, it doesn't actually go uh, to the Pacific Ocean, it actually stays over land into uh, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, to Mexico, and then it goes out to, uh, out to sea. And what happens there is uncertain after that. So I wanted to make this video to let you guys know this new situation that's going on. We have some more uncertainty about how strong this is going to be when it approaches Central America. And I will keep you guys updated as this situation progresses. But with that being said, it's going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps me out. It helps me make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather and report uh, uh, this stuff and warn them of potential hazards like this. We just hit 1,200 subscribers last night, so thank you very much. I, I hope we can keep on uh, keep on going, uh, get more pe uh, get more people engaged with weather. So if you haven't already, go please go ahead and hit the red subscribe button right there. But with that being said, guys, have a wonderful day. If you're in the ABC Islands, if you're in uh, Nicaragua, if you're in Venezuela and Colombia, stay safe.